Yeah, I'm fine. I was just looking at the fire. It's pretty warm. What? Hey internet, it's Jessica, and welcome back to Seduce Me to the Demon World, Matthew's Root. And I know it's been a while since I played this game. Very sorry about that, but I had to get all the spooky shit out for Halloween. But anyway, I'm glad to be back and seduce me and finally continue on with Matthew's route. And in the last episode, we picked a trainer and it was Rabbit. And um, from what everybody was saying about Matthew, it, it was kind of weirding me out because it seemed like he has like a dual personality or something like that. I'm just preparing for the worst because apparently Matthew has the worst bad ending. So here we go. <laughs> I was excited to see what Rabbit could teach me. She apparently knew a lot about magic, so maybe that would be able to help me defend myself and help me win this war. Still, the excitement of the situation was hard to ignore. You're excited about going to war? Okay, there. Our MC has a little, you know. What would Rabbit teach me? Would it be something that do with nature? With fire? With animals? There were a hundred things that could have been the possibility and I was eager to eventually find out and know. I was guided to the large hall, originally blocked off for Seto and Diana's training. Training. <laughs> However, because my safety because my safety became the priority, Rabbit and I were given the room to use to train and practice. That was awfully nice. As I peered into the space, I saw Rabbit's face and smiled at me. There you are. Come on in. I smiled, happy to know how patient and kind she was, or at least presented herself to be. I stepped into the room and walked towards her, taking the space taking in the space and how large it was. Nice room. Isn't it? It's perfect for what I have in mind to teach you. What does that mean? There it was. My eagerness began to bounce in my chest as I grinned at Rabbit, excited. What do you plan to teach me? Rabbit giggled at me, which made me tilt my head a bit in confusion. Was what, was what I said was funny? I plan to teach you how to properly defend yourself. Uh huh. To do that, I need to see what you can do with your spirit. I nodded and stood at attention, ready for my first lesson. Rabbit nodded back to me before stepping back and pointing her staff to the ground between us. The orb on her staff began to glow a bright blue color as a large wisp stacked out of it into the air. I watched in awe as it took shape from being a simple cloud to, of a magical smoke to being a large blue misty bear. Whoa. What the hell? Whoa! I instantly jumped back, surprised at the roar and let, it let loose in intimidation. Rabbit brought her staff back to her side as the bear got onto all fours on its paws, growling in my direction. This is an animal guardian. Oh, this is so a cool! A personification of your inner strength and power. Once summoned, it will protect you with their life. This is totally like, I don't know if anybody watches the, the web series Ruby by Rooster Teeth. Um, I don't know if this is a spoiler or not, but uh, in the last volume, I should say, or season, um, Weiss, one of the characters there, uh, her family, essentially, they're, they're, um, how do I explain this without sounding weird? Their special power, um, is summoning a guardian, which is, comes from their own spirit, so that totally reminds me of Weiss, and that's pretty cool, because Weiss is pretty much a badass. I stared at the bear before me, watching it peer into my soul with pure white eyes, and pant in anger. Rabbit had a bear hiding inside of her? That was shocking, to say the least. As terrible as it was, I imagined her have a rabbit spirit. Rabbit placed her hand on her chest and nodded to me. Focus on your spirit. Feel it try to take shape and release it. Okay. I looked down at my chest before closing my eyes and laid my hand over my heart. I had to focus on my spirit. It was strange to imagine doing so, but I attempted anyway. As I stood there, I could feel the energy flow within my body, ebbing and weaving through my veins like a bloodstream. It felt incredibly odd to, to feel such a sensation, but I continued to focus on my soul, trying to do as Rabbit asked. At last, I latched onto a strange feeling in my chest, growing larger and larger with each breath I took. Soon, it became unbearable to keep inside. I held my hand out, feeling it want to be released, and watched it in shock as a white and lavender mist jetted out from my palms and landed on the floor, revealing... Oh, cool! We get to pick one?! Oh, man! I kind of want to be a wolf. That kind of- the lion seems badass as well. I want to be a wolf, though. Fuck this. I stared wide-eyed as the mist has formed into a large wolf who, who seemed big as, as the bear, if not bigger. How the hell did that happen? It's a dire wolf! We're a Stark! Winter is coming. <laughs> Despite its form being a ga gaseous and enthralled, in, enthralled, 
The fur that was covered its body was glimmering in lavender. With its claws, bare teeth and white and eyes were a pure white compared to the bluish white of the bear. It snarled and let out a threatening howl as it pressed down on its all fours and prepared to strike its opponent. Rabbit seemed surprised as well, gripping her staff in accidentally fear before inhaling deeply and taking the sight of the animal guardian. Very good. Your spirit is strong. Hell yeah, we got a wolf. I smiled, happy to know that the size and signified my power. I was shocked that I was able to match a rabbit's guardian, but the thought of went away as Rabbit pointed her staff at me. Attack! Whoa! Upon her command, the bear reared back on its hind legs, let out a large roar before charging at my guardian. I followed. Su I quickly followed suit. Go! This is like Pokemon. That's what it reminds me. Go, Pikachu! <laughs> my guardian swatted on its four limbs before pouncing off from the ground and charging forward as well. Both animals rammed their heads into each other. Both animals rammed their heads together and pressed against each other before the bear took a swipe at my guardian, forcing it to the side. D I didn't expect to be affected by it, feeling. Feeling the pain hit my chest internally. What the hell happened? Did the attack on my guardian only affect me? I didn't get time to think on it, however. I assume so because the guardian is your spirit, so I assume that like, you would take the damage for it. I became open as the bear continued to rush forward, naming it me its target. Before it could reach me, however, my guardian leaped through the air and snapped its mouth around the bear's neck, causing it to fall to the side. I watched in disbelief as the guard I watched in disbelief as my guardian took down the bear gripping its neck by its teeth and shaking violently, causing it to release a roar of pain. Rabbit, on the other hand, gripped her neck and let out a yelp of pain. Rabbit! I couldn't say any more before the wolf, my wolf became the victim to one of the bear's claws slamming into its body, forcing it off with a whine. I felt a jab in my shoulder in the same spot where the wolf was hit, causing me to grip my arm and rub over in the pain. Damn, this this fight is like... Yo, this one suck, if I'm thinking about it, because if your guardian is connected to your spirit... You're just gonna get hurt, and then you get fucked up. It's not like, um, if your spear gets fucked up, then at least you have a chance to fight. Like, it doesn't matter. Your guardian gets fucked up, you get fucked up. Oh, it sucks. The bear got up on its feet and did as the guardian, and as did my guardian, and they snarled at each other, circling one another, winding up with the black bear in front of Rabbit and my guardian in front of me. I was astonished at the event, straightening up and taking in what happened. Rabbit let her out a pain smile before taping her staff, taping her staff beside her. Heal! The bear, who was growling before, stopped and simply kept a cold eye on my guardian, remaining in his place as Rabbit stepped up beside it. This is the power of an animal guardian. They obey and protect, but they are still connected to our spirit. What pain they feel, we feel that's, as well. That's cool, but that sucks too. <laughs> I grimaced, calling for my guardian to stand down as well. While it seemed really cool and effective for protection, it was the animal guardian became morally wounded, to the same that would happen to me, or I assume so. The rabbit lifted her hand and rested it on the bear, showing the guardian had physical weight and patted over its fur. However, we can only feel its pain. We do not bleed or die if our guardians are attacked and killed. Oh, okay, okay. Well, that's a relief. Rabbit rubbed her neck and smiled at me. I will say... Your guardian is quite strong for having never been summoned before. I felt flattered that my spirit was able to impress Rabbit. I guess that was a plus towards this training. Rabbit walked forward and held her hand out to my guardian, who seemed wary at first. Hey, hey, letter. I didn't I didn't know why I was speaking to it casually, but something felt right about it. The animal was essentially part of me, and I could feel that it understood me regardless of what I said. The, gar the guardian calmed down and leaned its head towards Rabbit, who placed her hand on its head and ran her fingers through along its fur. Truly magnificent! I had only ever seen another guardian this large once before. I smirked, looking at the bear. Your own, right? Rabbit shook her head and looked up to me, stopping with her gesture at my animal. No, from, uh, Diana. Oh. I had to stop myself before dropping my jaw. Diana was able to do this? Then again, I didn't think that this kind of magic was limited to just me and Rabbit. Was any magic tr truly bound bound to only one demon type? Rabbit acknowledged my facial expression with a slight smile. She has a very powerful guardian. I'm surprised she doesn't use it. I wonder what hers is then. That's interesting. That's because I don't need to. Oh, damn! Here comes Diana, the woman of the hour. <laughs> Rabbit and I turned on our heads to see Diana by the doorway, smiling at both of us. As she walked in, she observed our animals nodded and nodded, visually impressed. I assume everything is going well? Great, actually. Look at the size of her animal guardian. 
Diana walked over and sized up my animal with her eyes, nodding in agreement with Rabbit's excitement. Quite impressive. I expect good things to come from this training. I want to ask, is it rude? Diana, will you tell me what your guardian is? Is that too rude? I'm going to ask her. Diana looked over at me in slight surprise before smirking a bit and bringing up her two fingers near her head. As she swung them and pointed at the wall, a purple mist flew in from her fingers and sprawled into the air before landing and slowly forming into a purple and black panther. Oh shit, she's a panther! It snarled the look up the shape and swung its gaze over in the room and its inhabitants. I was in awe at its size. It was larger than the rabbit's bear, which made me wonder just how powerful Diana was. Diana walked over and ran her head over its head, running its, her thumb over the bridge of its nose with a, shop, with a soft chuckle. A panther guardian and a snake familiar. <laughs> how odd am I? You know, it makes- a panther seems very fitting to Diana, honestly. Huh? A snake familiar? I was confused at what Diana meant by that. She simply smiled at me. You don't wish for me to show you what I mean, dear. I promise you that. What does that mean? What? I pressed my lips together, having been denied the chance to see something new. However, if Diana put it in as a threat, I had to be cautious. After all, her spirit was visually larger than mine by the size of her guardians. As I looked to Rabbit, I was surprised to see it form a new awe and envy in her eyes as she looked at Diana's animal. I guess that's why Diana was the leader of the rebellion? But why was Rabbit envious? Diana walled her- Diana wilted her guardian away, causing it to fade in the air like a cloud of smoke before turning back on me. Well, if you don't mind, I must get back to work. There is a lot that needs to be done, and we have little time to do it. Diana nodded to us both before leaving. However, Rabbit stepped forward. Diana. Hmm? May I speak to you in private later, after I have finished training her for the day? I naturally furred my eyebrows. What was she wanting to talk about with Diana? Diana seemed confused as well, looking back at Rabbit but nodded nonetheless. Of course. I'll come here when you are finished. Thank you. Everybody's keeping secrets, what the hell? Diana gave me one nod before turning back around and leaving the room. I looked to Rabbit, curious as to what they had to talk about. But if it was important to speak in private, then, the mat then it mattered I should keep my nose out of it. Rabbit shook her head and smiled at me. Well now, where were we? I rolled my shoulders and looked to the two animal, two animal guardians, seeing them resting on the ground, patiently waiting for us. Were these really only used for battle? I looked to Rabbit, curious to know the answer. Hey, Rabbit. What is it? Are these guardians only meant for battle and defense? Rabbit shook her head and walked over to the bear, petting it softly and making a low, happy grumble escape from it. Think of these creatures as friends, whom we wish to protect us. A rabbit demon such as myself would benefit greatly from a bear companion. Both the bear and rabbit looked at me, hoping I understood. A look to my own animal confuses why I was, in it. I was able to imagine what mine looked like. The, in the intricacies of the magic seemed over my head, but I accepted it for now with a nod and a slight understanding. Until the night, we trained furiously, using our animal guardians to show me how to use them, what the commands to say, and, what and how to conserve my energy. By the time I left, however, I was exhausted. Exhausted and tired, I marched to my room and opened the door. Surprised to see Matthew already there. Huh? Matthew? What is happening? Oh my god, what is this? However, what was odd about him being in the room was not that he was there before me, but he was staring at the fire. Eyes glazed over in an almost pale blue tint. Something was going on. Oh my god, is he possessed? What the fuck is happening? I walked over and placed my hand on Matthew's shoulder, slowly walking around him and looking into his eyes. It almost creep it was almost creepy to see him, but it seemed almost dead. Matthew? Oh my god, what the What is this? <laughs> I gently shook my body, trying to snap him out of whatever trance he was under, but I gasped as a small as I spotted a blue ring around his neck. As it did as I did, the air around me became colder and a little darker. What was going on? Panic, I looked around, trying to put, pin down what was causing this. Hi. Hi. Matthew's voice brought me back to him, hearing his voice drill out of his mouth in like an um, emotionless doll. I gripped Matthew's shoulders tightly and shook him again. Matthew? Still nothing. Oh my god, what do I do? Do I kiss him? Because I feel like if I kiss him, that might not do anything. This is like, damn it, I keep referencing everything, but this is like Inuyasha. If anyone has seen the Inuyasha movies, the second one, um, the ending with Kagome and Inuyasha, Inuyasha getting, um, not possessed, but transforming, you know what scene I'm talking about. Should I smack him? I feel like I need to smack him. Okay, I'm going to smack him. I didn't want to do it, but I had to snap Matthew or whatever stupor he was under. I bit my lip and shut my eyes. Sorry, Matthew. 
With a breath, I raised my hand and smacked him across the face, causing him to gasp and pale blue eyes fade back to normal. Ugh, hey! Ow! Oh, I feel bad! I don't want to hit Matthew, but I think it worked! Matthew gripped his cheek and stared at the ground before looking up at me in shock, as if he had been stirred awake. Matthew, are you alright? You were spacing out like no tomorrow! Remembering the dull tint in his eyes almost creeped me out. The way his voice came out of his mouth only added the, added the creep factor to the situation. I wasn't sure what... I wasn't sure what got a hold of him, but I broke him out of it, at least. Matthew rubbed his cheek and stared at me like I'd suddenly grown three heads. Why? I furred my eyebrows and... I furred my eyebrows as he replied. Yeah, I'm fine. I was just looking at the fire. It's pretty warm. What? <laughs> Every part of me didn't believe him. Then again, something was wrong. Maybe Matthew was becoming a victim by it. I, f I frowned and cupped his cheek, making him lean into m it against... Making him lean into it slightly. Are you sure? You looked really... You looked like you were possessed. Matthew furred his eyebrows, unsure what, of, what I meant. Did he not really remember? I know... I now became a concern, despite knowing to know the answers. Why was he acting so strangely? Matthew took my hands into his and held it gently, rubbing his thumbs over the tops of my hands. Hey, is everything alright? No, dude, you were like possessed like five minutes ago. What is going on? I almost glared... That was what I asked him. I wasn't crazy. I knew that something was off and I had to try to figure out what it was. I squeezed Matthew's hand instead. Matthew, I'm serious. You were like staring into the fire with just- You were just staring at the fire. Your eyes just look glazed and stuff. Pressing his lips together, he looked down, trying to discern what I meant as if he didn't know what to do I had suggested he did. I pulled his hand to- I, I pulled his hands, not now worried. I didn't want to assume I'm making things up. You believe me, right? Matthew stared into my eyes, ra reading them as he nodded. I do. I, I do. I just... I don't know how to respond. I mean, I don't remember being in a trance. What is happening? As he said that, however, he suddenly curled over and held his head, hissing in pain. <sighs> what the fuck, Matthew? Quickly, Matthew collapsed on his knees and gripping his head, digging his fingers into his hair, and I followed him down. Now I knew for sure something was definitely wrong. I cut Matthew's face, trying to read his expression, and trying to figure out what was wrong from the sight. A moment passed before Matthew let out a gasp of breath, opening his eyes wide and panting for some fresh air to enter his lungs. His eyes painted his fear, as if he just encountered a nightmare within the moment that passed. Matthew, what happened? Matthew wouldn't speak, furthering his eyebrows and shaking his head. I... I heard someone calling to me. Calling to you? For a moment, I believed it was his mother. Maybe he was hearing what I heard in the human world, but why didn't I hear it anymore? It made no sense. Matthew shook his head and gritted his teeth. It sounded like my mother. But how could she- Oh god. I shook- I took Matthew's hands and held them to my chest, catching his attention. Hey, let's go ask the others about this. It's not too late to ask them. It's not too late to go talk to them. Matthew suddenly shook his head and took his hand from mine, grasping his shoulders. It's all right, really. I don't no, need that. No, 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 no. We can figure this out on Dude, our own. Dude, no, do not do this. If you're, if I swear to God, if Matthew's doing his like ego thing, like this is not the time, bro. Like we need to go get your brothers. Matthew, I felt I had a really bad feeling about the situation. Matthew was getting put in trances, then getting headaches and hearing his mother's voice. Obviously, so reluctant to help get the help of his brothers. No, no, no. Oh shit, no. Do I agree? Oh my god! I don't want to get the bad ending. I need to tell the brothers though. I feel like that's what we need to do. Just tell everybody. Right? They would know something, right? I need to tell them. This was too mysterious and dangerous. We needed help. Matthew, we need to- Please. Just trust me. Okay? How can I- What is happening? Matthew stared deep into my eyes, pleading silently for him- to, for me to trust him. I bent my lips, still not completely sure that that was the right choice. As I slowly let out a whine of complaint, Matthew gripped harder on my shoulders, not enough to hurt me, but enough to emphasize his point. Please. Matthew seemed adamant. I swallowed my nerves and nodded slowly, taking taking in a breath and letting out a sigh. Matthew leaned forward and kissed my forehead. Thankfully, I wasn't willing to trust- Thankfully, I was willing to trust them. However, the trust wasn't an issue. I trusted Matthew very much. What I didn't trust was whatever was trying to influence him or hurt him. I didn't want to just leave in this in the dark, and I didn't want us to hit a wall with us, with this could, that could potentially hurt Matthew, or make him do something even more odd. I grimaced before standing up, helping Matthew up. Come on, let's go to bed. 
Matthew nodded, agreeing right now. Sleeping was something we could probably need. I, le I led Matthew to the bed and helped him in, cuddling up to him and laying my head on his shoulder. Matthew? Yeah? Are you sure you'll be okay? I'm sure. I promise. I'll figure this out in no time. I feel like that's that's not- that means no, he's not okay. I nodded once more before closing my eyes. I let- I had to let him try. If all this failed, I could go to the others for help, but not unless it became dangerous. Not unless it became dangerous. Girl, you should have gone to the brothers right away? Oh my god. Still, something felt wrong about the entire situation. First there was something wrong with me, but now there's something with Matthew? We had the worst luck. I expected the knight to take me away to the world of slumber, but quietly awoken by Simon poking my side with his knife. Uh, uh, what? I looked down at my side to see Simon waving his arms and pointing at the door, revealing it to be partially open with his familiar red eye peeking through it. I stared, it's only wide-eyed, but Diana didn't move from her spot, knowing I spotted her. Did she go- did she want me to go over there? Simon pulled my hand and wanted me to go, so I snuck out of Matthew's arms and crept to the door. And crept to the door, causing Diana to back away from it and give me the space I need to leave the room. What the hell? Diana? Is everything alright? How- where is this coming from? I furred my eyebrows. What do you mean? Diana pressed her lips together and looked to the, into the room for a moment before looking back at me with a serious expression. I was doing my usual routine around the castle, and felt somewhat of a disturbance in the air, like something was trying to make contact with someone here. It was a weak wave, but- Oh, Diana knows! I stared at surprise. Someone was really trying to contact Matthew? I became overjoyed to know it was simple enough. Diana tilted her head at me, seeing my expression. What? Did something happen? Before I opened my mouth to speak, however, Matthew's plea echoed in my head. He wanted me to trust him. If I told Diana, I'd ruin his trust for me. I merely bit my lip, shaking my head. No, no, I'm just surprised is all. Diana raised her eyebrows at me. I didn't budge. I didn't want to be the one to say anything until Matthew needed me to. Despite it fighting against my ever moral code in my body, I had to put trust in Matthew. Oh god. Oh man. I understand where she's coming from though. Like, I get it. You want to trust your partner as to like what's going on and whatever and i know diana doesn't really have any personal like you know she doesn't have any right to her personal business but at the same time we're possibly putting everybody in the castle in danger so i feel like that kind of just goes over man i don't know what to do like in my this situation i feel like i would tell diana but i don't know eventually diana nodded before turning to leave i apologize for disturbing your sleep please have a good night okay i'll try diana with that, Diane left me alone in the hall. I stared, mildly flabbergasted, at the fact that she simply let it go. That, that is true, because Diana seems like the person who wouldn't um, let things go unless she knows what the fuck is going on. So maybe she does know, but she's testing us? I don't know, man. However, would she look into it more? I had to admit, I hope so. I returned to Matthew's arms at the night, hoped that everything would be okay. The morning was unkind as I awoke in a yawn, feeling drowsy, still trying to consume my mind before forced back to sleep. However, I had to train today, so did Matthew. Speaking of Matthew, I turned my head to see Matthew rubbing his eyes, waking up alongside me. However, his grumble let me know that the night was not kind to him. <sighs> is it morning already? I nodded and gently leaned down, kissing Matthew's forehead. That seemed to lighten the, his mood as a happy smile danced across his lips and let out a happy sigh. Good morning. Good morning. He's still cute, though. I smiled as I hovered over Matthew's face, seeing his beautiful blue eyes gaze into my eyes through the blur of sleep. With a sweet, infectious smile, Matthew reached his hand up and cupped my cheek. You are so pretty. Aww, you know what that? a sweet baby. I felt a blush creeping on my face. The way he, he said it so casually made my heart flutter, and he, forget, and he forgetting the world around us. It was like we were in our own little universe for a short moment. I nestled his hand and giggled. I didn't want the day to roll on us, getting ready to separate and train yet again. I just wanted to sit back with Matthew and enjoy our alone time. No problems, no danger, just us. Matthew grew a small smirk before shaking his arms around me and pulling me against his cheek, making me gasp and grab onto his shoulders, not wanting, to cr not wanting him to crush my weight. However, Matthew smiled and squeezed me close. No nightmare last night, huh? Yeah, no nightmare last night. Just you, like, you know, spacing out in, into into the fire, getting possessed. No big deal. <laughs> As he said it, I realized that there was no need to... There was indeed no nightmare for me, from me last night. I had a peaceful, dreamless night. I suddenly smiled and looked over to Matthew with a happy nod. Yeah, no nightmare. I had a good sleep. Matthew chuckled before leaning up and kissing me softly. Just enough for me to feel it. 
As he pulled away, I became curious about his own night. What about you? Matthew's face flared a bit as I asked, but he shook his head and slowly gained his smile back. Eh, it was rough. I woke up a couple of times, but that was pretty much it. Are you sure? Yeah, he's totally lying. There was more to the story, but I had to let it go. If he wanted me to trust him, then I had to go full extent of my heart. I nodded and planted a light feather kiss on his nose, making him chuckle beneath my, his breath. So, what's planned for you? Well, I figured I could skip some training and just spend some time with you. <laughs> with a place full of snark, I grabbed the nearby pillow and gently bounced it on him, making him feel a bit... Fail a, making him fail a bit. Hey! You know, training is important, Matthew. Matthew smirked and rolled us, rolled us both over to have him on top of me, bouncing his own pillow on me. I can totally train with you in a never-ending pillow fight! He's so cute! Oh, it was on. I quickly grabbed the pillow and swung it at, at Matthew, landing on the target, causing him to roll off of me. With a grin, I arched in my body in the opposite direction, hoping to land another hit on him. But Matthew quickly ducked and swung the pillow at me, hitting me with a soft, fluffy impact. Gotcha! So they're so cute! Oh my god. The battle became intense as soon as we were double fisting pillows, trying to whack each other with our own chosen weapons as well, avoiding the fireplace. The bench was truly amazing that it looked expensive around the room. Regardless, we were immersed in our own world, ducking it with the feathers and cloth as we lost track of time. We barely even noticed the door open. What's going on in- Oh. As Diana's voice rang through the air, I gasped in surprise and looked over to see the succubus holding two plates with stacks of pancakes on them. What frightened me was Diana suddenly knifed- What the fuck? That was the suddenly knife chucking itself at Diana's direction, causing her to step aside and letting the knife break through the side, effectively nailing the pancakes to the wall. Whoa. Hey! Whoa, Matthew, what the hell? Diana and I looked to Matthew, seeing him panting and posing the mid-throw. His eyes flashed back and forth between gold and blue, glaring at Diana at the most likely in surprise from her uh, sudden entrance. And once again, I was taken away from the fantasy and brought back to reality. Diana snarled and practically slammed two plates that she was holding onto the table, glaring daggers at Matthew. What in the seven hells was that about? When se seven, seven hells? hells? What the hell's going on? Diana? As Diana took a step forward, Matthew suddenly shook his head and realized he was approaching him, and he essentially attacked, causing him to step back and place his hand in front of him. Whoa! Whoa, hold on! Oh shit, Ah. Uh... I quickly retracted, not wanting Diana and Matthew to start fighting. Besides, Diana took us by surprise. Matthew couldn't have known. I rushed over to place myself between Matthew and Diana, holding my arms out to stop her. Diana, hold on! Diana stopped and glared down at me, now turning her frustration towards me. What? I opened my mouth to speak before Matthew rushed around me and pressed his hands together, bowing his head. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I didn't know it was you. I thought it was an attacker and... An attacker in my home? They would be dead before they even set foot through the gates! I looked at Matthew, seeing him grit his teeth and pressing his hands together hard, trying to get some for forgiveness from the succubus who seemed to want to cut his throat open. Diana snarled quietly before snapping her hands away and, and gripping his chin, making him stare up at her. Ugh. The next time you dare to attack me will be the last time you feel your heart beating in your chest. Okay, I am. Um, Diana needs to tone it down a bit, but like, I understand why she's angry because like, think about it. If Matthew thinks it's an attacker, we're in Diana's castle at the moment. I don't think it would be easy for someone to just like lurk into the castle, because she has a point. They would probably be dead before they can even get inside. Is the mother doing something? I swear to god. With a threatened scrawl, Diana pushed Matthew back from her, back and away from her, causing her to turn and walk towards the exit of the room. I, however, rushed to Matthew, catching him before he tripped over his own feet. Eat, then get to training. Don't waste time. What the fuck is happening? Diana finally left, leaving me and Matthew lost in our own space once again. This time, we were awakened and aware of what was going on. Mildly ashamed of the delusion we placed ourselves in before suddenly we surprised from Diana. Matthew rubbed his head, looking to the floor. Man, I really screwed up. Uh, comfort him, okay. I knew that was messed up, but I needed him to get himself together, fix his mistakes so that he could move on and figure out the problem he already had. I wrapped my arms around him, nuzzling his shoulder. It's alright. I rubbed his shoulder and rested, and rested his forehead against mine. How the heck do I deserve you? I mean, it's fine, but you know, you don't need to go throwing knives at people all the time. <laughs> I merely smiled and kissed his cheek. Because I, because you love me and I love you. With a chuckle, Matthew kissed my cheek in kind and nodded. Right. 
Matthew and I turned to our breakfast, and we ate what we could, with Matthew taking the plate he managed to attack. The pancake almost slipped onto the knife, and then that it was still embedded on the wall, causing Matthew to run and catch it in the, his empty plate. He didn't eat it, and he merely left it there, avoiding it like it had some sort of poison in it. We eventually separated the train, letting the day roll. Yo, this- Dude, oh my god, I didn't expect Matthew's story to be this intense. What the fuck, dude? I was excited to see what training we would have today. However, as I walked toward the Great Hall to meet with Rabbit, I bumped into someone. Ugh. Oh no! Who the hell is this Sorry. guy? I didn't mean to hit you. Oh, I, he's, he looks cute, but who's this? Looking over who had collided with me, I was surprised to see a young man in some uh, flo flowing clo cloth garb. Waving his hands in front of him in worry. What was wrong? He just bumped into me. It was just an accident for sure. It's alright. <laughs> it's alright. Despite my reassurance, the boy bowed and apologized once again. I really am truly sorry. That's enough, Bajang. Who's this? I quickly looked over to see Diana walking towards me and crossed arms, looking to the boy and flinched his name. Bajang looked up and looked up and down and jumped up the side of Diana beside me. Rebel Queen! Uh, I have a message from my lady. I know. Come along, and I will hear it. Just Diana gestured Bajang to follow her as she nodded to me. I apologize for keeping you. Good luck with training. Okay. Huh. Could only nod before Diana walked in with the boy behind her. He seemed nice. I wondered for a moment who he was and shook my head. Moment in time. I continued my journey to the Great Hall and turned to the room, peering in and expecting to see my trainer ready for me. That, unfortunately, wasn't the case. Rabbit stood there in the middle of the room, her staff in front of her. While farmed in a semicircle around her were pig fawn demons, ones who very much resembled the ones I saw in the vision of the boys gave me about the past. Why were they here, though? Let's watch, because I feel like this is like a training exercise. I don't know. I was lost for what was happening, but something in my gut told me to stay put. Following my instincts, I watched as Rabbit stepped back, gripping her staff hard to the with the imp demons crackling quietly around her. A, a large blue light began to glow from the crystal at the end of her staff, causing the imps to turn around and become distracted by it. As they did, however, Rabbit swung her staff in an arc, causing a large wave of ice to spray around to the, engulf them. I stared in shock as the imps became encased in ice, frozen in time and space. What, but what made me, what made my mind completely break was in awe was that Rabbit lifting the end of her staff and taping and tapping it to the surface of the ice. The bodies of the imps suddenly began to crackle and crumble before dissolving into the ice as if they were ne as they were never there. What the hell? I took another step trying to take in what just happened. What kind of ice did Rabbit trap them in? Why were they in the first place? What was going on? Rabbit turned over to her shoulder and gasped to see me come in. As she did, the ice disappeared, evaporating into the air. Huh? Oh, I'm sorry, I just... I stared at Rabbit, confused as ever, as she turned around to let out a sigh. I'm sorry. I was doing some training of my own. I'm usually not on the battlefield in war, but since the next battle will be our last, we need to have as many people fighting as we can. I instantly shook my head. It was understandable. I wasn't the only one allowed to train after all. It's fine. I'm sorry for interrupting. Rabbit laughed a bit, hugging her staff to her body. It was pretty cute to see her standing up in, to the in illusionary imps, but she seemed to handle herself well. After a moment, however, she shook her head and, cleaned her, and cleared her throat. Anyway, we should start your training for the day. Can't let this time go to waste. I nodded, summoning my guardian and ready myself. This time, Rabbit pointed her staff out, causing a large group of imps to appear, ready to slice me into, and, ready to slice me into and my animal guardian. I smirked, knowing that how easy this could be. Upon my command, my guardian leapt up and forward and began to claw through the group, dodging their swords and spears, making sure, the, the, making sure to rip through each one as they came. As one fell and turned into mist, another would emerge and take its place. It became practice of endurance. My animal kept fighting, but I felt myself slowly become weaker with each attack and movement. It, had, it happened the day before, but the battles had been shorter and were divided with many breaks in between. Today, however, had me go through wave upon wave of imps until the afternoon when I felt drained completely of energy. Soon my animal guardian dispelled itself, unable to maintain its form without my energy, leaving me defenseless. However, Ravager spun her staff in the air, willing imps to vanish. She walked over to me with a smile, most likely proud of what work I had done. I'm very shocked to see how long you managed to keep fighting. Many people would have dropped halfway through, but you pushed forward. Yay! <laughs> Thanks. In truth, I didn't want to give up on on no matter what happened. 
This was training, and stamina was a key part of defending myself. Rabbit looked into the window, seeing the light, uh, seeing the light of the afternoon slowly drift into the night. Why don't we take a break for now? Then we'll do one last round before your training is over. All right? I nodded, going far as at the corner of the room, sitting down, wanting to shut my eyes for a moment to take a nap to regain my energy. I barely noticed the figure running into the room and approaching Rabbit. Oh, it's my lady. It's the boy again. Uh... I opened my eyes, looking up to see Bajang, looking at Rabbit with a slight grimace on his expression. Rabbit turned to him and placed her staff to her side, tilting her head and furring her eyebrows. Bajang, what is it? Well, uh, you see... Rabbit stepped forward and, and checked Bajang's face, looking for something. What's wrong? Did she take your energy? Oh, no, 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 no. She, she didn't. She refused to take any from me. But she... She gave me another message to send back to you. Rabbit waited as Bajang took a breath and, and straightened up, calm from the flustered expression he carried earlier. Whatever he had to say must have been important. She wants to speak with you alone tomorrow morning, before anything is settled. Tomorrow morning? Why not tonight? Bajang rubbed his hands and another grimace painted over his face. Well, she said she had plans later tonight, so she can't. With whom? Wait... Never mind. I don't wish to know. Are they talking about Diana? With a sigh, Rabbit turned and hugged at her staff. Thank you, Bishang. You're dismissed for the night. Oh, thank you, my lady. With that, Bishang bowed his head and turned, letting Rabbit sigh to herself, shaking her head. Why do we have to keep discussing this? Discussing? Discussing what? I'm gonna be nosy as fuck right now. Couldn't help it but be curious. Rabbit looked over at me with surprise before... Pressing her lips together and looking away. It's nothing to worry about. Just a minor topic we need to chat about. It's nothing. From the tone of her voice, it was definitely something large. However, Rabbit wasn't willing to spill the beans just yet. I had to let it go for now, knowing that I would find out sooner or later, regardless of the fact. Bajang finally left as Rabbit let out a sigh and looked back to me. A desperate look from a sort of distraction in her eyes. Whatever Diana needed to talk to her about was really rallying her up. Still, I refused to let it get the best of me. I was certain that I would perfect that I would perfect fighting with my guardian and, f and forget about whatever w they were chatting about with ease. Are you ready to go again? I nodded, sitting up once more and shaking my nerves. I was getting tired, but the day wasn't over. I trained into the night, like I usually did. This time, however, Rabbit seemed to be rougher with her obstacles and attacks, laying out the stress from the situation she wouldn't tell me about. I felt a little bad that she was holding it in, but I understood why. As Rabbit and I finally relaxed, Rabbit smiled at me, exhausted. You're getting better. That's good. That's, that's good. Just, you know, hiding secrets. I grinned and nodded, happy to know that there were improvements. As I turned to leave, however, Rabbit stopped me. Wait, um... Huh? What is it? I turned to see Rabbit rubbing her, her ears over nervously. Can you come a little later to practice tomorrow? You know that Diana is coming to discuss something, and, well... She didn't want me to overhear it. My curiosity was piqued, but I nodded regardless. All right, I'll come by later. With a smile, I left Rabbit and made my way back to my room. Okay, guys, I'm gonna have to end the episode here. This was a crazy episode. Dude, like, what is happening with Matthew? He's actually scaring me. Honestly, he was like... I, I, just, I just know. I, I had a feeling when I started Matthew's I had to do something with his mother. And, um... It's just weird because the way that he spoke about his mother in Seduce Me One was completely different on how I'm perceiving her now because it seems like she's a bad person. But then again, I don't know if that has to do something with the demon lord, but who knows? We will see. Oh, God. Anyway, remember, don't leave spoilers in the comments if you know what's going on. Just tag it if you want to, but yeah, oh my God. Anyway, if you guys enjoyed this episode of Seduce Me, remember to leave a like, comment, and subscribe to join the companions. And uh, if you haven't played Matthew's Rude, let me know what you think is going on, because this is some fucked up shit that's going on right now. Ugh. Anyway, I'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye!